الدين نادني للخير أوصاني الدين نادني للخير أوصاني والذنب أضناني يا خليق الأكوان والذنب Now, I remember a few very funny things from the course. I remember one thing, one line that I always use with my students when I teach, actually not, I don't have the tawfiq to teach those types of courses, but I teach medical school. So, uh, one of the funny things that he said, in the very beginning of the course, he said, uh, this is the course, this is the background of the course, and he said that, and there will be an exam at the end of the course. There will be an exam at the end of the course. And then he read, the mufti was reading, because it was written in the manual, in the manual of the course, which was like the text, the course notes, it said, and you will have to work very hard to fail. <laughs> now normally every teacher would say what? You will have to work very hard to pass, right? Or you will have to very, work very hard to get an A. But subhanAllah, this is the Islamic teaching, right? You will have to work very hard to fail. Yani, you will have to try to shoot yourself in the foot and actually you know, want to fail this course. Same thing with the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treats us on the Day of Judgment. You know, in deen, you have to work very hard to fail. You make wudu, wudu wipes away your sins. You pray prayer, prayer wipes away your sins. You pray juma, juma wipes away your sins. You make a lifetime worth of mistake, hajj wipes away your sins. You make tawbah wipes away your sins. You have to try. You have to try to not receive the mercy of Allah. I mean, you enter into Ramadan, it wipes you clean. I mean, how many opportunities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for us. The only way to get to Jahannam is to try to go to Jahannam. You have to take yourself and force yourself into Jahannam almost. That's the extent of uh, the way the deen is, the, the foundations of the deen. And so, you know, every teacher in my life, every teacher in my life has said, you'll have to work very hard to do well. Nobody has ever said to me, you have to work very hard to fail. Yet, I remember, and that's why I remember that line so vividly in my mind. You have to make every effort possible if you want to fail. Okay, that was one important thing, and that's the initial part of the course. And then there's one thing I remember from the very end of the course. At the very end of the course, Sheikh Zulfikar called the people who were helping with the course into the room. Now, you know, there were the course attendees who were all the ulama. And then there were the people who were helping, you know, just making sure that the course went smoothly. So he called them all into the room. And he said that uh, there's going to be an exam at the end of this course. And uh, after the exam, we're going to hand out awards to all of the attendees. And then he looked at us and he said, you have to come up with one award for each person. It doesn't matter what, you have to come up with one award for each person and it, you have to make some excuse that there be some award for everybody. Some aspect of that person has to be rewarded. So uh, we started thinking that how can we reward everybody? You can say, okay, you were the top in the class, you were the second in the class, you were third in the class, you were the one who read in the class, but you can't reward everyone. So we made a list that, okay, like this was the top in the class, he was second top in the class, he was third top in the class, these were the top ten in the class, this was the, the person who read in the class, this was the person who set up the class, this was the person who organized the class, this was the person who sent up the flyers about the class. We made a whole list. Then they took it with, somebody took it to Sheikh Zulfikar and he started looking and obviously you could not include everybody in the list. Maybe we had included 20 for awards and the other 20 we couldn't figure out how to award. So he said that, um, okay, he was the heaviest in the class. Give him one award for that. He's looking at the names. Then he said that he was the most smiling in the class. I remember that he smiled the most in the class, so give him one award. Then he said that, uh, you know, now, this one was the tallest in the class. You didn't, you didn't give him an award. So one by one by one, everybody got covered. And then I started thinking, actually it didn't hit me until today, when I was having this discussion with that person, that SubhanAllah, that scene that's still embedded in my brain, is this ajeeb how these things pop up out of nowhere. That's exactly the scene of the Day of Judgment. Yani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make every excuse to put somebody in Jannah. Every excuse to put somebody in Jannah. Now you know the extremes of it. The one famous example that we've, that we've mentioned multiple times that comes in hadith where there was a woman who basically was selling herself yet on one occasion she saw a dog that was thirsty and she used, she got the water for the dog and gave it to the dog and that was sufficient to put her into Jannah. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seek a re reason to reward every person that has any ounce of sincerity within them. This is the beauty of our deen. 
And this is the way by which our scholars and our Mashiach and our elders, this is the way that they understood the deen. I remember on one occasion I was sitting in a talk of Sheikh Zulfiqar and also I read this in Hadith as well that on the day of the extremity of Allah's mercy on the day of judgment how he will make any excuse to reward each and every person on the day of judgment two people will be brought to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala two people who were who, who were basically sinners they will be brought to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala both of them will be banished to the hellfire both will be banished to the hellfire after being banished to the hellfire one of them will hear the pronouncement of Allah that you are banished to the hellfire and he will start running, 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 running towards the hellfire running just as fast as he can towards the hellfire and another one will hear the pronouncement of Allah of Allah's being, banishing him to the hellfire and will drag his feet and look back and then will walk forward and then look back and then drag his feet and then look back so both of these people will be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will be asked to, to the, of the first one that I, you were banished to the hellfire so why did you run? so that person will say oh Allah I spent my whole life disobeying you I thought that at least I could close out this circumstance by obeying your command that I should run to the hellfire so you said go to the hellfire so I ran as fast as I can to obey your command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives that person and puts them into Jannah <laughs> for, for some excuse puts that person into Jannah then the second person is asked that uh, you know you were banished to the hellfire you dragged your feet you looked back you dragged your feet you looked back you dragged your feet you looked back so you know why so that person will say that uh, Ya Allah you banished me to the hellfire but your mercy is so overwhelming that I was walking towards the hellfire thinking maybe you might call me back from your mercy then I walked forward, then I looked back thinking you might call me back from your mercy. Then I walked forward, then I looked back thinking you might call me back from, from your mercy. And then based on that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, yes, my mercy overrides my wrath. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put that person into, into, uh, into Jannah as well. So this is the extent of the excuses that will literally, the excuses that will be made on the day of judgment to put people into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's jannah.